Hey guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where today we are struggling with how many wings do you need to put on a glider to take to Juno so it will actually glide. Uh, it turns out you need to put a lot, like a lot of wings on these things. Last week we built a glider with, uh, well, three, maybe four different delta wings upon it and that was still not enough to take to Juno and fly. So today we're making something with a bit more bulk to it. As you can see I'm making a massive canopy of wings here and I have the idea of attaching many many more wings to this central post here to just try and give us the lift we need to get off the ground when we're on Juno. Um, now you can see I'm stacking these quite efficiently here because well I want to try and get in as many as I can but I also want this to look kind of spiffing. I don't, I don't want it to look just like a collection of wings all stacked up. Uh, the main inspiration from this flight actually came from the uh, Kerbal, Kerbal page that we're on in on Facebook. Uh, Alex Hiley was like, hey, you're gonna have to get this off the ground using this sort of design, pictures now on screen. Uh, and I was like, actually, I know you're taking the mickey, but you might actually be right here. So with that particular set of information and inspiration rather, I went forth and built this monstrosity, which I think is actually quite good. Um, the lift rating is, I don't know. I mean, each Delta wing gives a, gives a two. So straight away, we've got like eight just on those central wings there let alone this massive underwing that I built here um, which was actually kind of the, the the wing from the first design you know where we've got the the triangle in the middle then delta wings offset the other direction outside of that and then just kind of make a uh, a weird delta wing embracing hug backwards thing yes and that's how I'm going to describe it the more observant of you out there will notice that in the part repository we have all the parts which can only mean that we are in sandbox and yes indeed at the moment I am in sandbox. Uh, this is mainly because I want to be able to use hyper edit and I am not going to be using that on my career mode in any way shape or form. So what I did was I wrote down all the part numbers, um, all the part numbers, all the part designations that I had access to on a pad and went over here to start playing around and seeing what I could do um, because we had to get out of here and test on Juna. Which through the glories of editing is what we are going to do right now. I have added a few more control surfaces onto the back and got some like extra wheels underneath but this is all we wanted to do here was bring it out this far and see what we could do for landing this thing. Well, not just landing it, see how well it rolled down a hill. Uh, I was going to use the uh, little helpful rover there to pull it along, but I thought, hey, maybe rolling down this hill will give us enough speed. And indeed, at 15 meters per second, we were taking off, which to me screams fast enough, or at least slow enough, I suppose, actually, was the, uh, the, the one I was going for there. Uh, I had to make sure we could land because that is half the journey after all like taking off isn't everything involved um and then we just drove the rover down there because well we wanted to try and get it back and see see how well it uh, reacted with this unfortunately i completely messed up that drive and went well stuff it then which to be honest is normally the cry that i give when i think all my testing is complete so we got, did all that, we came out of sandbox, we came back to my career mode here. I had a look through some of the contracts to see, well, just if anything interesting was coming up. Uh, and one thing I didn't show you was the painstaking process of rebuilding this um, over here in, in career mode. Uh, I then decided that I needed to add some science because after all, that is what it was all about. This, this vehicle isn't just for having fun, though, to be honest, that is its primary function, is so that I can have some fun when we're over in Juno, because our Kerbals are going to be waiting there for a very, 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 very long time. About a year and a half by Kerbal standards, I believe. Um, you'll notice that a few other things I've added, as, as well as the science on the back. I've put some vertical stabilizers on the, the, the very far end wingtips there. Uh, uh, yeah, I think everything, all in all, that is my hand glider ready. So what do we need to build now? Well, now we need to build a, um, a pulling rover, a, a very helpful rover. The, the design we had was nice. It was good for when we were scaling around the um, Kerbal Space Center, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to build something that can go to, to Juna and be ultra useful there. Also, as light as possible, ideally the same weight as the glider, which was a lot heavier than I actually intended it to be, not what with all the extra wings and stuff. But that just gave us a little bit more, more playroom on, on this side of the vessel. Um, obviously, what I'm trying to do... Uh, sorry, talking about like all the balances and stuff. Uh, what I'm trying to do is balance out the rover with the glider so that we can strap them both to opposite sides of the vehicle, well, the spaceship that will be going to Juna. 
that's the plan anyway and that is the plan that I've been working towards throughout this entire process um, and I think I, I really liked the the sort of the form and function that I got on on this rover here uh, it carried everything that I wanted it to carry and uh, even had a little face on the back which I always like but for reasons of utility decided to get rid of uh, in the end I replaced it with a docking port so that we could just like kind of stick it on the back of the uh, of the vessel that we're of the spaceship sorry vessel is kind of a, a generic term that doesn't really help you guys out at all does it Poor commentary skills aside, right now what we're trying to do is figure out a way of putting the docking port on here. Now the one thing I was trying to avoid was putting it on the back because having having that as the attachment point for the spaceship that's going to take it to Juna struck me as quite odd. It would be um, sticking out quite away from the vessel and that was the one thing I didn't want to do. But with the design being what it was, this meant I had to try and figure it out, figure out a way of putting it sort of raidly on the um, on the vessel here, on the, the rover sorry. And uh, that to me screamed all sorts of destructive like impacts and stuff. So I thought what we would do is just stick it on the back deal with the fact that it's going to be like sticking out of the vessel a little bit and just um you know wing it it's kind of the Kerbal way after all uh i'm now looking at ways of putting on parachutes so we, that we can actually get this thing down to the surface of juna um getting it up to the vessel is not too much of an issue you know we're, we're quite good at being able to just like strap rockets around everything but getting it down that is an issue okay so we're out for our first test we want to make sure it, it drives around and it drove perfectly as we wanted to do the second thing we wanted to know is to make sure they um mated up with dr hang well dr hang obviously being the name of the hang glider that i've built here uh we're just going to launch this from the um vab because the space plane hangar didn't actually have the width uh, so this is something that i need to upgrade at some point i i do find myself using the space plane hangar more and more recently so yeah definitely something that i need to sort out and then we're just going for a little drive and i'm a little bit worried because because every time I go over sort of 10 meters per second, this has a tendency to just kind of spin out a little bit, which is, is not really what I was going for. Um, in fact, I was hoping to have a really stable thing, but th th there we go, this is, this is what we've got. So after a bit of rebalancing, jiggery pokery, and moving everything to the VAB, it was time for the actual full scale test, making sure like the rover and the glider worked well together and everything just kind of meshed the way I wanted it to. Uh, one of the main problems I had with is that this rover, uh, this glider, sorry, had such a high lift rating that just getting it off of the launch pad meant that it was like flapping around all over the place and I had to have a nice drive, a uh, nice fly around, try and get it to land nicely just beyond everything. And yeah, it was, it was a, a little bit of a nightmare on Kerbin, but this this was good. This meant it had like massive amounts of um, oomph for getting off the, the floor in Juna and, and that's what it's all about. Okay, so Jeb's out to test off this, uh, the, the, the helpful rover, try and make sure everything works out fine. Um, and of course, one problem that I seem to have here is every time that he got out of the, uh, the cockpit on this particular rover, uh, he would get thrown quite a distance. Um, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Uh, to, or even if I have to deal with that. It, he, he didn't seem to die at any point. Uh, I'm not sure how far he's going to get thrown on Juno, whether that's something to worry about or not, or whether, you know, the, the lack of gravity means he'll be ejected at the same velocity, so he hit the ground at the same velocity. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, okay, so now we're having a little bit of trouble just keeping everything kind of lined up. Um, and indeed, I wanted to get them so well lined up that I wanted to see whether they would make together. Uh, this was one of the other things that I really wanted these two to be able to do. Uh, I wanted the rover to be able to back up, basically become the front wheels, drive it around Juno because we're not always going to want to fly from one place to another. Occasionally we're going to want to pick it up with the rover and drive to another area of interest, or at least is the plan. So the last test was a bit of a dud. We'd managed to park the glider right on top of the hatch exit, so there was no way of getting Jebediah in or out or moving everything around. Um, and it was at this point that I realised that we just didn't have the battery power. Um, trying to get up to speed on just the, what the cockpit was holding really wasn't doing well enough. And also throwing these batteries on the back kind of gave a bit more stability to it. Uh, you'll notice that the, the centre of mass is very far forward in relation to the wheels and that, that, that wasn't great. So all the things that we thought we had to throw on, like the batteries and the solar panels etc, I tried to throw on as far back as possible to try and just bring that centre of mass backwards some more. 
After some more mucking around and lining everything up, we came to this, the final test that convinced me everything was fine, or at least everything was good enough to go to Juna. Um, maybe get a bit more practice at some point on the way or something, but as it was, all good. Now, this was a little disheartening, but everything took off, everything did fine, everything did exactly what it was supposed to, it's just our control was lacking a little bit. Which meant two of our three essential vehicles were complete, and now we just had to work on this one, the lander. The quite possibly the most important one the one that's going to get our kerbals from orbit down to juna and back again that that last bit is so very very important unlike the glider we don't need to do any sort of on situ testing here we don't need to go off and use hyper edit in the sandbox mode to try and make sure everything will take off and land fine we have the Kerbal Engineer here, which thankfully you can set up to all sorts of different um, body types and stuff. The one that I've chosen is obviously Juna uh, to make sure that I've got the to weight ratio and not just that, but also the Delta V to get us back. Now, if all I was doing was sending this capsule down and back up, that tiny little fuel tank that I had on there a second ago would have been fine. Unfortunately, that is not what I want to do. Uh, I want, well, for starters to have three Kerbals in there. I also want to have a whole load of science on there. Um, and I think that may be it. Um, we, we also need a bit of control um, for the, the main vessel, if you will. But that sort of stuff will not be coming down to Juno with us. We'll actually be using Kerbals to take that off in orbit, put it onto the vessel, and then we'll be back. And Yeah, I, I, I've got plans in my head. I, as you guys well know, it's probably not going to match up to what goes on. So the lander is starting to shape up now. And unfortunately, I seem to be following the same sort of universal principles that are always inherent in any vessel that's going down to the surface got to wait around for a bit and then take back off. Uh, we've got fuel tanks underneath, we've got massive engines, we've got like the, the, the Kerbal sat on top of it all and we've got lots of parachutes to ease us down. Like I say, very standard design. Uh, it would have been nice to do something different, but I'll be honest, I just couldn't think of anything different to do. Uh, I was a little bit worried that those landing legs wouldn't be strong enough, but then at the same time, we are on Juna. Uh, gravity is something like a half. Uh, I don't know if it is a half or like, like a half, I'm, I'm not sure. You would have thought this would have been one of the basic bits of research I would have done early on, and um, I probably did do it early on and forgot. I do happen to know that the atmosphere down at the surface of Juno is the same as 8 kilometers in the air in Kerbin, but that's because those were the numbers I was trying to use often, and obviously I didn't need to use the gravitational constant of Juno all that often. Alright, so right now we're trying to figure out what science we want to take with us. Obviously we want to take at least one of everything, the goo canister, the materials bay, uh, but I was giving thought to giving a second goo canister but I was like no we'll, we'll take this engineer stuff with us just so we know all the numbers that are going on and we'll try and just balance everything out um, I'm not sure what parts are physical physicsless and what parts aren't but we'll just hope that a margin of error here is taken up by the slack of the SAS unit hopefully who knows hey hey who knows and that marks all three vehicles we are taking to Juna. There is a fourth I want to make, a tiny Ike probe. Uh, it will be uh, also the same way as the glider and the rover. Uh, but until next episode when we're working on that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this development process. I will see you next time when we're going to work on that probe and also get everything in orbit and ready for the Juna transfer. So until then, bye!